Good morning. It's the Call Flow Radio Show, and you're on the air. Well, as Francis Wood would say, you could be if you give us a call here at 434-394-0924 for the Call Flow Radio Show. It is your June 19th, and uh, we want you to hold your calls because we do have a special guest in our studios, but he's no stranger to the WFLO uh, microphone and family here. It's Daniel Jordan. He's a park ranger for High Ridge Trail. And um, Daniel, welcome. Well, good morning and thank you for having me this morning. It's so good to see you again. It's been a long time. It has. Yeah. It's always a joy to be with you all. Well, that's great. Well, tell us a little bit about you, how long you've been with the Park Service and, um, you know, what's going on in your life. Well, there's a lot going on in my life. Um, so I, um, I've been with, with Hybrid's Trail, uh, it'll be nine years in October. That's hard to believe. It is. It's Coming years. up on a decade here yeah. in Farmville. Yeah. But, uh, but I love it, and uh, my family enjoys being here. Um, but I've been in Virginia State Parks for 16 years, mm-hmm. and I've been in some facet of parks and recreation for 29 years now. It's hard to believe. I started working in parks the uh, the week before my first week of high school back in 1994. Uh-huh. So, yeah. um, but it's, uh, but I fell in love with uh, working outdoors and just mm-hmm. never was able to shake it. I, th- I think if, uh, not mentioning, but Francis would have loved to have become a park ranger because he loved being outdoors. Yeah. He would, would have been a good one. He would have been a great one. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you have family. Do you live in her in Farmville? Yes, I, we live in Rice. In Rice? And so, okay. And I, have, I have five kids, and they're all getting older by the day. Five children. Yes. My goodness. So my oldest is is uh, going to be getting his license this week. I can't uh, believe. Oh, man. <laughs> we moved here with five very small children, and uh-huh. they, they're, no, they're no longer small. Well, he, he should help around with uh, taxiing. Yes. Yeah. I think that's the, a new job description. <laughs> yeah. so. Okay. Well, tell us about uh, what's going on at, uh, on the, at the park these yeah, days. Yeah. So we have a, a ton going on. First, um, June has become our busiest month. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we started the month off. We had our National Trails Day race, the 5K, uh, with uh, the Friends of Fibers put on, on June 1st. Mm-hmm. And we had Clean the Bay Day. And uh, we participated in the Farmville Community Day. So it was a busy weekend. Mm-hmm. And then we had a, a time trial bike race the next weekend. And then this past weekend, we had the Firefly Festival. This coming weekend? It, it was this past weekend. Oh, this we past just, weekend. Yeah, we just finished, yeah. Uh, finished that I up. I haven't seen that many fireflies out and, and about well, there's in my you, woods. You need to come out in the uh, on the bridge because mm-hmm. there's tens of thousands, oh, good. and there's over twenty different species. Now they are not synchronous because people have big feelings on whether the synchrony or not. But it's yeah, there's over twenty species that light up the uh, Appomattox River bottom, and it is quite the sight. But we um, we sold out 850 tickets each night on Friday and Saturday this past weekend. That is a Totally awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, it is an organic program. It actually started right here at Buffalo Creek Bridge back in about 2010. They were doing a stargazing program, and they were looking at stars above, and someone's like, there's stars below. And it was just fireflies everywhere. So that started. Yeah. And so, um, and then we're heading into this weekend. We have the, uh, the night train 50K. That's a 31-mile race. Oh, wow. So, and that's going to be hot. It is going to be very hot. So we uh, we're working with the race director to to implement a couple of changes. The race starts at six p.m., so it runs oh, okay. all it's evening. An evening, I see. Yeah, it'll be, at least be a little cooler. It will, but it's uh, we're we're working to ensure the safety of our runners. Sure. And so but, water stations and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Awesome. So um, I love June, but it is July first. It will be a, a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, but then the other thing is we have a <clears throat> ton going on in the park. Um, you know. I've, like I said, I've been here nine years, and so you um, have kind of taken the, the park from its infancy up, mm-hmm. um, and so now it's become an adolescent. Um, and <clears throat> we, uh, we've added a mile of trail on the Pamplin end, so we've, oh, we, okay. the trail used to, it was 31.2 miles, right. now we're 32.2, mm-hmm. and it used to end at Heights School Road. And it was, you know, kind of just anticlimactic. You know, you right. stop and it's like, huh. <laughs> Well, uh, we purchased um, a mile of trail from uh, Norfolk Southern, and we were successful in getting a recreation trail program grant. Mm-hmm. And so um, this past um, winter, it was completed. And so there's the removal of old rail and, you know, the ties and, you know, clearing out negative vegetation. Right. Mm-hmm. 
It is amazing. And so now we end right short of downtown um, Pamplin, Pamplin, Pamplin City, right? Right, Pamplin City. And so, uh, and that's that's been such a, a joy to work with the town of Pamplin and the friends group. And well, pals. that might bring some people into the town of Pamplin mm-hmm. as or into the Pamplin City, yeah, uh, as as well to yeah. make it sort of a tourist attraction. Yeah, and it's, it has been really interesting because the this you know was considered a dying town, mm-hmm. and even back in two thousand eighteen. Um, there was a, a movie done called Hope's City um, that's on Amazon, and this film um, uh, director, Ricardo Fleming, I believe his name is, he came out and he's like, wait a minute, this town is on the brink of coming back to life, and uh, and did a did a short documentary on it, and, you know, and he's he's right. You know, the depot was redone years ago, but mm-hmm. now there's a, a community market, there's um, – me Paul's restaurant, Bain's Books coming in. There's a microbrewery coming in. There's a thrift shop. There's oh, wow. an ice cream shop. Well, those buildings are so fascinating. I hope they haven't. I hope they're restoring. They them, are like, restoring them, and yeah. um, and so you know this little downtown is mm-hmm. coming back to life, and so we're we're excited to be part of that. Yes. Um, and so, oh, yeah. but yeah, so we we opened that up um, this past March. And um, and the community loves it, and so it's really neat to see the amount of traffic that's up there. And wow, so, that's great! Yeah. All right, yeah. what else is going on? Well, yeah. and then we um, we've kind of been tucked away. Our office has been at Old V Dot Shop and uh, in in Green Bay. Oh, okay. For, since 2010, uh-huh. and um, it has always been our desire to be more accessible to the public. And so um, we are really close to opening a visitor center at Camp Paradise on the eastern side of High Bridge in Prince Edward County. Mm-hmm. It's in Rice. And it's um, we designed it after the 1914 Norfolk Western uh, Railroad Standards for what a train station looks like. And so it is a beautiful building. Um, we are we're still working through the permitting process and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to take a couple months to get furniture and you know some uh, merchandise and you know temporary exhibits mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we do have um a we're gonna um contract out doing prof- you know really professional exhibits and stuff like that mm-hmm. but uh but the bi- biggest thing is we will now have flush toilets on the oh, trail hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> so that is reason for celebration <laughs> ah, so we're, we're really looking forward to, yeah. to opening that and so but again, it'll it'll be fall before we mm-hmm. we're open to the public. But we're we're closer today than we ever were before. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, it sounds fabulous. Yeah, and you know, being a state park like that, you you know, to have a visitor center is essential. Oh, it really is. Yeah. yeah, and and with that project, we um we paved Camp Paradise Road, which was it's a mile and a half long road, mm-hmm. and it was. A lime treated road, so it was just a gravel road going in, and uh, and now it's paved, and so it's you know your visitor experience is is what my driving force is. Absolutely, uh, you know, I want to when when you're on four sixty, make it more impressive. Yeah. Well, yeah, and coming from four sixty or wherever it is, that's where your visitor experience start. I mean, you could argue that it actually starts at your house when you're looking at you know the website, mm-hmm. um, but you know it's. It's been really neat to see the transition and the Friends of Hybrid Trail, which is a wonderful organization. They've adopted um, Aspen Hill Road, mm-hmm. and um, and so you know we keep do it clean. Yes, so we yeah. we keep um, we do several um, trash litter pickups a year, mm-hmm. and uh, and so it's such a joy to be able to like when you go four sixty, you're you're kind of you know that's like the pre park, mm-hmm. um, and then you get up to the to Camp Paradise Road. Right. And now it's paved. And so it's, it, you know, the experience is better. Mm-hmm. So A whole lot better. Yeah. Well, that's good. So that sh- should open up probably in the fall then. Yes. Now, Camp, Par- Camp Paradise is open right, right. now. Yeah. But, yeah, the visitor center mm-hmm. isn't open yet. Um, and so we need the occupancy permit and, and then, for, like I said, all the, all the accoutrements that go along with the new building. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, but, yeah, we're we're looking forward to it. And we will have a, you know, a grand opening that we'll announce and, everything else when we get closer to that. So. Okay. Well, now, let's see. How far down does um, the trail go uh, west? So east, uh, east yeah. So it, we uh, the trail stops. We call it the Burkeville Berm. 
it stops in the middle of the woods right now. So when you um, when you're at Orchard Road, you go about a mile and a half east, and you'll hit the end of the trail. Mm-hmm. So there's a mile of qu- mile and a quarter of of rail line from there that goes into Burkeville. Oh, okay. And so that is still owned by Norfolk Southern, uh-huh. um, and we we hope to purchase that one day, and we will complete that. So the full build out of the trail will connect. Uh, anchored to Burkeville on the east and Pamplin on the west. Okay, funding. Yes. How do you get your funds through grants or through you know that so, type of thing? Yes. The so uh, the the state park system mm-hmm. is we <clears throat> are um, half um, funded through the general assembly. Mm-hmm. So fifty percent of our funds come from um, from tax money, right. and then the other fifty percent come from uh, mainly revenue. So cabins, camping, uh, parking, emission fees, right. all, that. all that. And mm-hmm. so, and we're, we're a really good value um, for the taxpayer. So right now, um, e- you know, your tax dollars, my tax dollars, mm-hmm. it's less than seven cents per person per park a year is the, is mm-hmm. the value. And we're less than a percent of the state budget. <clears throat> um, but we're, you know, it's there's a balance there, mm-hmm. and uh, and that, you know, that's always a, been a big debate: is well, I pay taxes, why should I have to pay a parking fee? But this parking fee really, I mean, they really help our budget to be able to operate because we don't take much tax money. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, <clears throat> well, I understand there are five state parks right in, around in this the, area. Yeah, the Farmville Five. So you have mm-hmm. uh, Bear Creek Lake, you mm-hmm. have Holiday Lake. Twin Lake, Sailors Creek, and Hybrid Trail, all within 30 minutes of downtown Farmville. Yeah, that's, so, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, and actually, we, like, we will, um, the last Wednesday in August, we will do the Farmville 5 Blood Drive right here at the train station. Okay. And so every participant that comes out, will get, we'll give them a free parking pass. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, usually we do a pint for a pint, three roads in the past has donated a pint of beer to, you know, beer tokens for anybody that's coming out. And then we do a raffle for a hundred dollar gift card for state parks. That's well worth going yeah. to give blood mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. That's good. So. Well, anything coming up as far as uh, 4th of July or anything coming up next month that you want to mention? So, um, the, uh, not in the next month, like, so we're not a traditional park. So mm-hmm. July and August, we really do slow down because, the trail can get kind of hot. Yes. And the beaches are kind of nice. And yeah. so I yeah. would, I, most people, including myself at times, would rather be in the water. Mm-hmm. Um, so July, we don't have a ton going on. Uh, but we do have the adventure, the, the Virginia State Park Adventure Series. And so the race this weekend is part of that. Part of that. And then in October, the October 5th, the first Saturday in October, we'll have the Highbridge 5K and Half Marathon down here. Um, in downtown, and that's part of the adventure series. Okay, and so um, yeah, but yeah, so the adventure series. When did that start up? It's it's been a number of years. I mean, it's still you know pretty young. It's been within mm-hmm. the last five years, and there's I mean, you know, I'm guessing this is, concludes all the parks, all the parks, yeah. and there's you know, points and, and prizes and mm-hmm. stuff. But it's a it's a really neat opportunity, and these are races at the park. You know, we the park puts on the the High Bridge Half Marathon. And th- so that's part of it. But this weekend, Virginia Ventures is doing the the 50K, mm-hmm. and so that's an outside partner that we work with, and they come in and and um, and bring you know they mm-hmm. bring in people to to do it. So it's a it's a great partnership. And even though I'm like, man, these knuckleheads are running 31 miles in the heat, <laughs> and in the in the winter in December they're going to come out and do 62.4 miles. They'll run 100K. All right, what's your really busiest month? Is June? The June, busy, June? yeah, it's and the it, busiest. It, October used to compete, but June is by far blowing the door handles off of October right now. And so, but it's you know it's a good month. It's a busy month, and mm-hmm. it's all hands on deck. And right. uh, but but you know we're the park is here for the people. This is mm-hmm. this is the community's park, mm-hmm. and we want to make sure that we're providing a a good experience and a good opportunity for people to come out and either enjoy it for walking, biking, or even if they're coming to a festival, whatever have you. Oh, oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah I'd see um, cars with their bicycles, you know, yeah. on the back of the car. And what about pets now? I, you allow horses mm-hmm. and dogs. Yes. And 
I mean, that's pretty much what we see. I mean, yeah. I've seen a, I've seen cats and cats. strollers out there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to um, say something. But, yeah, like so, um, yeah, you're more than welcome to bring a dog. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, like the Firefly Festival, we ask that people don't bring dogs right. to that just because it's so many people. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, as long as you have them on a six-foot leash, um, mm-hmm. you're fine. And we have um, we have dog um, stations mm-hmm. along the trail. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to clean up after them. Right. And so, yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're definitely pet-friendly. And so and handicapped parking. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so we um across the entirety of the park, um we do have handicap um spaces available, but also um something that not everybody knows, we do um offer accessibility tours. And so we have a we have a golf cart and so if anybody has any accessibility because Camp Paradise is 3 tenths of a mile from the parking lot to the bridge. And it's it's mainly flat. Mm-hmm. However, there's there are some folks with mobility issues that that's a little bit too far. Mm-hmm. Not a problem. Just call the park office, uh, which is four three four three one five zero four five seven, and we will give you a free ride out to the bridge mm-hmm. and you know take you out to see it. And and you know we do have people that that have taken us up on that, and we it's a joy to. To make the the bridge accessible to everybody, Every, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you got uh, you're coming to the end of a full month. Yes. And uh, uh, next year, I've got to put it on my calendar, my must do list about the firefly. Yes, we would love to have yeah, you out there. It's, yeah. It like it never ceases to amaze me that it's like Christmas lights in the valley, and so it's you know they start about nine thirty and they stop at eleven. So that's that, what our contract yeah. says with them is eleven o'clock. Okay, um, you got to but yeah, it's um, but in it, in <laughs> we're actually we're working with the local master naturalist to do a study mm-hmm. um, because we know there's a lot that we don't know about fireflies. I so. remember when I was a kid. Um, this is awful, but we used to catch them mm-hmm. and take the little. The well, light organ, yeah. yeah, and put them on our fingers, and you know they were diamonds, or they would show off, or whatever. Real fancy kid stuff. You know? Yes, absolutely. But yeah, you need to check it. It's, it truly is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds so. great. Okay. Well, keep up the good work. Well, thank you. You and did the same. We're just as happy as we can be about the visitor center. Can't we look forward Thrilled. to that. Yeah. And. Um, what you've done at toward the pamphlet end as as well to make it yeah and yeah. We're, we're looking forward to one day being in Burkeville. We don't have a timeline on it, but um, we'll get there. Okay. Pamphlet was a was the first piece, and yeah. so okay. Uh, but yeah, excited right. about the trail coming through All town. Right. Well, congratulations, and uh, don't get too nervous about. Your child driving. Oh, I think I'll be, I'm, I'm working on it. I think oh, I'll be all right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, take care. Thank you so much, Chris. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you too. And it's always, always a joy. Absolutely. All right. Thank Come you. Come back Mia. soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. That was Daniel Jordan and he is park ranger there for High Bridge Trail um, State Park and giving us all this fantastic information about what's going on with the park. So um, I should have said we would open up the lines for questions, but I forgot to do that. But anyway, uh, he is still on the premises. So if you have any questions for uh, Daniel Jordan, just give us a call at 434-394-0921 and we'll bring him right back in here. Right now, we've got Noah Massage. You got me, Chris. How you doing? I've got gotcha. you. Yes. Oh, yep. uh, yeah. Uh, so how have you been? Uh, good. Well, doing doing all right. Okay. Come this weekend now, you're going to probably be inside enjoying yeah. the Yeah, oh, I'm, not, I'm not. As soon as it hits um, Friday, Friday is the last day. Well, Thursday is the last day I'm going out tomorrow. <laughs> Friday, I'm staying in. Friday through whenever I have to, you know, whenever it starts cooling down again. You know, Chris, I can't handle... 90 degree weather, let alone 97 degree. And 98 degrees. 98 degrees. Yeah. And uh, just hot and... Ugh. Yeah, I can't do it. Well, I'm going to be at the beach. I'm leaving after work on Friday, mm-hmm. heading to Virginia Beach for the Virginia Association of Broadcasters Summer Convention at the Marriott. Okay. Down there on, on Virginia Beach. And um, they, they do have their, um, of course, their meeting and their meetings, I should say. And then they have a wonderful award ceremony with a great dinner and, and those awards. 
and they're going to be honoring Francis. I heard about that. That's yeah. really so. That's I don't really know awesome. exactly how they're going to be honoring, but they are going to honor Francis, and so I've got to be there. Absolutely. You know? So it'll be fun to see the the, the uh, Virginia Association of Broadcasters family, mm-hmm. radio and television. So. Yeah. And keep your fingers crossed for that Emmy award oh boy. Too, coming up on Saturday. Goodness, goodness. Anyway, we've got a couple of minutes here to go. We can do a brief history lesson. I do have um, a recipe coming up as well. And uh, I had a I had to do an eeny, meeny, miny, mo on this one. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. it's between a million dollar dip mm. and some... Um, Grilled beef tips. So I'll let you know which one I've chosen. <laughs> which one won? Which one won? That's yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway, on this date in history, our featured event was um, after the failure of court appeals and of a worldwide campaign for mercy, husband and wife Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were put to death on this date in 1953 become the first American civilians to be executed for espionage. Mm. All right. Starting off on a strong one there. (laughs) 2016, the Cleveland Cavaliers, led by LeBron James, defeated the Golden State Warriors in a thrilling game seven to claim the franchise first NBA title. Mm-hmm. Okay. No espionage in Willie that Mays, one. Willie Mays, too. Did you know that? We lost I, Millie, I did Willie, hear that. Millie Mays. Willie Mays. I've got my spoonisms going here today. Oh, goodness. Uh, 2013 American actor James Gandolfini, who was best known for his portrayal of mafia boss and family man Tony Soprano mm-hmm. in the HBO's drama series, The Sopranos, died of a heart attack while vacationing in Rome. 1963, Soviet cosmonaut Valentina uh, Tereshkova, the first woman to travel in space, returned to Earth in the spacecraft Vostok 6. So she was the first female astronaut. Mm -hmm. Mm. 1961, Great Britain recognized Kuwait's independence. In 1944, during World War II, the Japanese combined fleet and the U.S. A fifth fleet um, in, engaged in a major air and sea battle, the Battle of the Philippine Sea, <clears throat> which ended the next day with a U.S. victory. Mm. So that was short-lived. In 1934, the Federation communicate. Uh, excuse me, the Federal. I should know this. The FCC was organized in the United States. Uh, 1910, the first Father's Day was celebrated in Spokane, Washington. Mm. How about that? That was 1910. In 1903, Lou Gehrig, also known as the Iron Horse, one of the most durable players in American professional baseball and one of its great hitters, was born. Lou Gehrig, and he was an ALS victim. Mm-hmm. And that's they they go they call it Lou Gehrig's disease as well. That's right. 19, in 1896, American socialite Wallace Wallace Warfield, who became the wife of uh, Prince Edward, Duke of Windsor, um, after the latter abdicated the British throne in order to marry her, was born. That was quite a love story. Mm -hmm. Okay. In 1867, this is as far as we'll go, the Emperor of Mexico, Maximilian, was executed by a firing squad. Good thing. Good thing we don't have those anymore, firing squads. I know. I mean, I'm sure they're... They exist still somewhere, but, well, you know. All right. We've got uh, a time of 831. So let's get to our business at the bottom of the hour, which includes the weather forecast. It's brought to you by the Bank of Charlotte County. Hello, I'm Stuart Wilborn, manager of the Bank of Charlotte County Loan Office in downtown Farmville. I invite you to call or come by and see me about your loan needs. Whether it's time to purchase investment property, build your dream house, expand your business, or purchase timberland or farmland, you will find old school personal assistance with attention to detail. Stop by our office at 216 North Main Street or call us at 391-1136. The Bank of Charlotte County, giving you more for your banking needs. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Okay. All right. The weather forecast. 
<laughs> Let me uh, get get my head straight here. Sorry. Ah, uh, let's see. Today we'll see a high of of uh, eight of ninety one degrees under sunny skies. Tonight mostly clear with a low of sixty three. For Thursday, mostly sunny with a high around ninety. Thursday night mostly clear with a low of sixty five. For Friday, sunny with a high of ninety four. Friday night mostly clear with a low of sixty nine. And Saturday, uh, my screen has gotten really, really, really orange. <laughs> So that means I guess it's going to be hot, and it is. Uh, 97 degrees for a high on Saturday. Saturday night, a low of 73 under partly cloudy skies. Then Sunday, another hot one. Uh, look for a high around 98 degrees. Humidity to 82%. Our wind speed is, well, we don't have any wind, so it's calm. Barometer at 30.36 inches. We did have a low of 64 degrees outside. We are currently still fair and the temperature remains at 71 degrees. The news are the weather forecast brought to you by Charlotte County, the Bank of Charlotte County, with branch locations in Phoenix, Charlotte Courthouse, Brook Neal, and their loan office, downtown Farmville. All right, we do have our birthdays coming up. I hope Noah is ready for that. It's brought to you by Terry Atkins, Wilson, P.C. The Law Office of Terry Atkins, Wilson, P.C. is located at 117 North Main Street in downtown Farmville. With deep roots in Farmville and our surrounding communities, Terry and her legal staff specialize in real estate law, wills and trusts, business formations and collections. Experience and professionalism are extended to every customer in every case. The needs and concerns of every customer are their primary focus. If you have legal needs, contact the Law Office of Terry Atkins, Wilson, P.C. for a consultation at 434-392-1422. All right, Noah, here's your cue. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate uh-huh. it. You're welcome. Let's get to those birthdays and we, perhaps anniversaries. We have a day. lot. We have a lot to get to. Okay. So I'm going to start off with Amber Nicole Davis. We have Donna Wilborn, uh, Betty Harris, and Yvette Reed. We also have uh, Jermaine Lee of Cumberland, Virginia, Sarah Trent of Farmville, Virginia, and Eunice Brooks of Farmville as well. Those are all birthdays. Um, all, what is it, four, five, six, seven, seven. Seven. All seven right, birthdays. That's pretty good. Yeah. For this June 19th, or Juneteenth, as they would say. Mm hmm. Anyway, uh, fantastic. Tell them how they can get their names. Yes, absolutely. To us. So they can. Um, they can call in at 434-394-0924 um, and send those th- those in verbally. Or if they just want to email them, they can at birthdays at WFLO.net. Or we also accept Telegram or Smoke Signal or um, even what, – what's the um, Morse code? Oh, Morse code. We do Morse code as well. Um, okay. We'll have John interpret those you know, <laughs> messages. Okay. We can do that. All right. We do have a caller. Good morning. You're on the Call Flow Show. Good morning. I'd like to uh, call in a correction for the last three names is for tomorrow, the 20th. Oh, the 20th. Oh, I apologize. Yep. I, I see that right there. I, I apologize. That's All my right. bad. That's fine. We'll just celebrate both days. Okay, thank tomorrow. you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Okay. That's all right. We can celebrate two days. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, okay. All right. The For legal advice, visit Terry Atkins Wilson PC on Main Street in Farmville for those birthdays. Now, <clears throat> it's time for our recipe of the week. And... Um, I came up with the grilled balsamic beef. Okay. Okay. It's prep time is 15 minutes. Cook time is 10 minutes for a total. Mar- uh, they're gonna, you're going to marinate, though, mm-hmm. for eight hours. So okay. let's get to it. All right. Here are your ingredients for grilled balsamic beef. Uh, you're going to use a half a cup of aged balsamic vinegar. Mm-hmm. Now, let's see. My balsamic vinegar has been in the refrigerator for about six months. Does Mm. that make it aged enough? Very, very aged. Aged well. (laughs) Um, 
Okay. I, 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 I sorry to cut you off too, That's Chris, okay. but um, uh, my parents had balsamic vinegar, unopened balsamic vinegar. Uh, they bought in Pennsylvania, and we still have it so <laughs> that's, that's ancient, ancient and it's unopened yeah. as well so i mean it's probably just like wine at yeah, this point it's just like a very strong <laughs> like liqueur um but yeah i mean like you know i i vinegar and like oil like i don't mind if you know they get older or they age um no. i just i think it always adds a different element to of course it cooking does. of course okay. all right all right, we've got the vinegar now. Mm -hmm. It's aged balsamic vinegar. Okay. Um, a half a cup of olive oil. No, excuse me. A quarter cup of olive oil. Let me get this up here. Okay. Uh, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce or Worcestershire sauce or however you say it. One tablespoon of that. Six garlic cloves, finely minced. Mm -hmm. Or you can buy them in a jar. That's finely true. Minced too. Yep. That's what I do. A half a cup of sliced green onion. Uh, let's see, a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. All right, two teaspoons of kosher salt. One eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Two teaspoons of honey. A fourth of a cup of fresh rosemary leaves. Two pounds of beef top sirloin. And four skewers. Mm. Okay, that's your ingredients there. Step one, you whisk the balsamic vinegar, olive oil, uh, the Worcestershire sauce, uh, the garlic, the green onion, the salt, the black pepper, the cayenne, the honey together in a bowl. Add rosemary and set aside. That's going to be probably your marinade, mm. right? Okay, now you cut the beef into cubes at about one and a quarter to one and a half inch squares and add to the marinade. Now, stir to coat all cubes well. Wrap and refrigerate overnight, tossing occasionally if possible. And, you know, you got to toss it up in the air. If you wake up to go to the bathroom or something, yeah. you can go and mix it around. Toss the beef, yeah. Anyway, uh, all right. Uh, step three thread the beef on four. <laughs> spread or thread the beef on four skewers. Try to say that five times fast. No, thank you. <laughs> then you pack dry with paper towels before grilling all right you save any excess marinade for basting grill over high heat basting occasionally with a marinade about five minutes per side for medium or until beef reaches desired doneness remove meat from grill and let rest five minutes before serving meanwhile bring the remaining marinade to a boil in a saucepan strain and use as a sauce for serving. Mm. Okay, that's it. That sounds very tasty. Mm -hmm. Like I like I like balsamic honey, like all these things mm -hmm. together. Yep. Flavorful. Well, it, um, it would be uh, this was by John Mitzwich, and he says that would be one of my signature dishes if I were a chef at a barbecue restaurant. The aged balsamic vinegar base. Marinade is perfectly balanced, and grilling over high heat creates a beautiful sear. Mm. So there you go. And we will have, I'm have, having problems with my printer, mm. so I'm going to try to print it out um, this evening so we can have it to post. Okay. All right? But it sounds really good. It does sound good. So that is your uh, recipe for the week. Mm-hmm. Now let's get to celebrity birthdays okay. for today. This is June 19th. Okay, we've got Paula Abdul and Zoe Saldana. I saw that. Yeah. Is it Zoe or Zoe? I is think it? it's I think it's Zoe. Zoe. Okay. Well, others include actress um, Felicia Rashad. Do you remember her? Hmm. Uh, what did she play in again? Well, she appeared in an episode of Grey's Anatomy where she played a woman who had been impaled by a tear gas canister. Mm. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> anyway, she's, she's, she's a wonderful actress. Anyway, so she's turned 76 today. And let's see. Rocker Ann Wilson turned 74. Wow. Mm. 
I think uh, Ann Wilson's one of uh, John's favorites. Mm, are you serious? Yeah, Frances liked her too. She's got a great voice. Let's see who else is celebrating today. Actress Kathleen Turner is celebrating, and you wouldn't even recognize her. But uh, she attends the premiere of HBO's White House Plumbers. <laughs> now I guess that she's maybe starring in that. In that, but uh, she's put on a little bit of of weight, which changes her appearance mm-hmm. some. Anyway, she turns seventy. She is actually. Uh, Ka- Kathleen is actually her middle name. Her first name is Mary. Mary oh. Kathleen. Paula Abdul. John. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> oh. uh, she's one of John's favorite nice. uh, singers. And John is going to be celebrating today by playing all these ladies. I know. Uh, uh, her only Grammy was uh, for best in, is for best music uh, video. Best music video for her song "Opposites Attract." Mm-hmm. She's a little thing too. She is, but she's a great dancer as well. Uh, actress Zoe Saldana turns forty-eight. Uh, she once directed an episode of the TV series "The Ropes." Mm. Um, let's see who else is that right? Rapper Macklemore mm-hmm. is forty-one today. And he once performed on American Idol. I think I remember him. Used to watch that all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Who's your favorite um, uh, judge? Blake Shelton, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I liked That's it fair. when Blake and... Um, sure. Now his wife. Oh, oh shoot. I, I'm so bad. The name went right out of my head. Uh, I'll get. I'll think of it in a minute. Um, Actor Gina Rollins is 94. Mm. Singer Span- Spanky McFarlane of Spanky and Our Gang mm-hmm. is 82 today. Mm. Keyboardist Larry Dunn of Earth, Wind, and Fire is 71. Uh, country singer Doug Stone is 68. Singer Mark Marty DeLar- DeBarge of DeBarge is 65 today. Actor filmmaker Andy Laura of Caroline in the City. 61. Singer guitarist Brian Vander Ark of the Verb Pipe is 60. Actor Mia Sara of Ferris Bueller's Day Off mm. is 57 today. Good Morning America host Laura Spencer is 55. Guitarist Brian Head Welch of Corn, 54. Actor Jean uh, Jean De- Dujardin of The Artist is uh, 52, actor, I probably wrecked that name, actor Robin T- uh, Tunney uh, uh, is 52, actor Bumper Robinson of Sabrina the Teenage Witch and A Different World is 50 today, actor Poppy Montgomery of Unforgettable and Without a Trace is 49, Gwen Stefani, mm. I'm trying to think of that, uh, you know, Blake Shelton's very Oh, good. yes. Yeah. Um, that those were the good times. Okay, yes. With the American Idol, that I thought. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Now maybe that was the voice. Gwen Stefani. Yeah, the voice and Blake Shelton. That that's right. Blake Shelton's on the voice. So is Gwen Stefani. You were talking about American Idol. Oh yeah, yeah. American Idol. Um, I don't know. I know. Uh, like um, Simon Cowell was like on yeah. that show yeah. for a little bit. That was my favorite. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Um, I think Howie Mandel was also on this show. Um, but the voice, I know, I know like a lot of people watch the, and like I've heard that's like, like a equally comparable to American Idol, if not better. I heard that Howie Mandel's wife mm-hmm. was found in a pool of blood ah. after a drunken accident or something like that. That was on, that was on in the news yesterday. I forgot to look it up to find out all the details. But anyway, I guess I guess he was pretty upset about the mess, you know. Isn't he like, uh, what's that called? Um, uh, he doesn't like blood. <laughs> well, well, that too. But um, kind of, um, I don't know why I can't think of the word. Um, when you're like clean, like only care about obsessive OCD. Uh, kind of, yeah, definitely OCD for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's sure. that must, must have been an unfortunate sight. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see who else. Singer banjo was. Singer and banjoist Scott Avett of the Avett Brothers is 48. Actor Ryan Hurst of The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy 
is 48 today. Mm. Actor Neil Brown Jr. of The Walking Dead and The SEAL Team is 44. Actor uh, Lauren Lee Smith of CSI is 44. Actor Paul Dano turns 40. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's see, actor Giacomo Giannotti of Grey's Anatomy is 35. Actor Chuku Mudu or Modu is uh, of The Good Doctor is 34. And actor Atticus Schaefer of The Middle is 26 today. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Those are our celebrity birthdays. The number to call on the Call Flow Show on this Over the Hump Wednesday, June 19th. It's also a holiday. So I mm-hmm. think the banks are closed today. Oh, goodness. I was planning on going to the bank today. But well, you're going to have to reschedule that one, Chris. Yeah, I'll have to reschedule <laughs> that for tomorrow, I guess. The number to call, 434-394-0924 for the Call Flow Radio Show. Mm-hmm. Let's see here what we got in entertainment for today. I'm just wondering if they had anything, said anything about. Oh, Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel. Yeah. Germaphobe, though. Like, also big germaphobe phobe guy. Oh, germ- germaphobia. Yeah, germaphobia. And just OCD in general, I think. So. Well, let's see. Pharrell at Louis Vuitton celebrates diversity of human skin in Paris UNESCO show. Whatever that means. Let's see what it is. Um, In the run up to the Paris Olympics, Louis Vuitton celebrated the beauty of humans and their skin in a a star-studded menswear showcase at the headquarters of the UN Cultural Agency UNESCO in Paris, models wearing garb and all hues of human flesh paraded around a giant globe on glass pattern in Bhutan's signature Demir Czech, creating a visual symphony of diversity. Mm. So that's, that's quite something. Let me see if that was for, I guess it's Pharrell Williams. Who was doing that? Hmm. Anyway, let's go back and see if we can find something interesting. Maybe you can find something interesting on your phone, oh, like yeah. oddities and me, stuff like that. Let me look. Since for we're not best. don't have any calls coming in, let's see. Anti barking devices for your dog or neighbor's dog. Okay, let's see what. Fourteen reasons to choose dog barking stopper for your twenty twenty four piece. And quiet. One. Consistent barking can be disruptive and stressful. An anti-barking device can help restore peace and quiet to your home uh, environment by cutting down on all that noise. uh, These devices also help you get along better with your neighbors and create a calmer environment. Plus, they can even strengthen the bond between you and your dog making the whole pet owning experience um, more enjoyable. It's called the dog barking stopper. Wow. I need to get one for my brother's <laughs> dog. That, what? Uh, I need to get one for my brother's dog. He is like a mad, he's like a lab, like a hyperactive lab, you know, um, and he's not fixed. And so he just like humps everybody's leg and just like <laughs> runs around forever, mm-hmm. just like upsetting and I I don't know, um, but like, yeah. Those How are, old is he? Uh, he's like, I want to say a year and a half. Oh, so he's well, still like, uh, I'll grow that. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. But um, he he is uh, uh, an obsessive barker. I think um, he just loves to bark. Uh, the Jason's dog, my brother Jason's mm-hmm, dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> well, if a neighbor's dog is causing uh, noise issues, certain anti-barking devices are designed to emit a high frequency sound that is inaudible to humans, but effective in deterring dogs from barking. This can be a discreet and non-confrontational way to address noise issues without involving your uh, neighbor directly. Well, usually if a dog is barking, it means something. You know, something's going on. It's not like they they like the the sound of their bark, Mm -hmm. basically. But anyway... Uh, This device, uh, daily noise from barking dogs can be overwhelming 
and stress-inducing anti-barking devices offer a simple solution to escape this chaos by reducing excessive barking. With these devices, you can create a calm, peaceful environment, allowing you to relax without constant interruptions. And I don't know. Uh, improves quality of life for pet owners and their families. Constant barking can be a significant source of stress and annoyance. An anti-barking device improves the overall quality of life by creating a quieter, more harmonious living environment. Mm. But you know what? Well, it's safe, too. Uh, anti-bark device utilities, safe ultrasound and sound, specifically designed for dogs, emitting a gentle and an audible ultrasound uh, our dog barking repellent ensures the safety of um, to prevent dogs from barking at night. Mm -hmm. Anti-dog barking device for neighbor's dog efficiently captures a dog's attention without causing any harm. The sound frequency is specifically tailored to be audible to dogs. Over time, dogs learn to associate their barking with the ultrasonic dog stop dog bark stopper, creating a conditioned reflex that helps reduce excessive barking man but here again you know i wonder if they have dog psychiatrists <laughs> <laughs> should, i guess they do or they have something like a little like, like a little doggy out. bed yeah with why like a, a dog you know yeah. why a dog barks they've got to bark for a reason yeah yeah that that is a good point especially you know maybe it's like um you know like dogs feel anxiety or stress, like all like those emotions. I, I feel I feel like as like humans, we forget that from time to time, or you know, I'm, at least I'm guilty of that. But like when you think about it, maybe he's just like, oh, you know, I'm not feeling well, or like, hey, I don't like um, I don't like how you're looking, you know, well, or I'm hungry, you, feed you, me. You <laughs> like, know, that's you know. that's but, right. Yeah, Iggy, Iggy, could... Iggy, when she wants attention, she'll bark. Mm -hmm. she'll bark. Yeah, she wants to go outside, she she'll bark. If she sees something outside, like, you know, a deer or something like that, she's going to, you know, she's going to bark. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're, that's, they're usually telling you something. Yeah, yeah. You know, trying to say. Trying to c communicate with, yeah. with them. With constant barking, I don't know, maybe they, their hearing is so acute yeah. that they are trying to talk to other mm -hmm. dogs, you know. Oh, possibly. In the neighborhood. Just carrying on a real conversation. <laughs> maybe it's very it's very likely actually um yeah there's a joke by a comedian um who's like who's like what's up with that dog that you know in the middle of the night he just starts barking out of nowhere in the neighborhood and he's like he's like hey hey like he's just like barking to nobody though mm -hmm. like at three o'clock in the morning and mm -hmm. i don't know i i've like lived in neighborhoods where like i'll be in bed and just out of nowhere um just the the dog or like singing a whole song to mm -hmm. no one. <laughs> well, you never know. He, or he might, or he's just like warning, or he's just like he's like I'm going to wake up everybody. That's probably what he's thinking. <laughs> he's going to wake up the whole neighborhood. Um, All right. Well, did you find so get on yes, another um, subject? Did oh, you find something? I did. Um, I just wanted to read this real fast. My, I, I apologize. Um, my phone's a little. Um, having some uh, spasms or problems, but uh, basically, um, let me see if I can pull this up. I'm so sorry. Uh, Don't apologize. Okay. Anyway, I can here tell we go. You. Okay, go ahead. Um, in the uh, in the Republican primary for the House of Representatives, oh, yes. fifth I voted. district. Did you vote yesterday? <laughs> No, uh, did, did John McGuire yeah. leads Bob Good by 315 votes, oh. um, which is – that's such a tight number. 31,370 votes for John McGuire and 31,055 votes for Bob Good. That is such a – they're probably going to have to recount um, or like – I don't know. <clears throat> like we'll see where if that goes. But mm -hmm. usually when it's that close, don't they recount – as well, I would think so. I think that just to make sure, um, you know, good would want eliminate the element well, that, of human is error. It the vote all in. Mm. I don't think they're all in yet. I think they're still counting. Yeah. yeah. So yes, I did vote yesterday. I hope a lot of our listeners did as well. Yeah. Sounded like they had a pretty good uh, turnout for the primary. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was uh, that was really good. Okay. All right. Well, let's see here. It's 8.57, mm -hmm. and 
Mm. Oh, I meant to ask you, where did you, uh, where did you go to vote? Is there's usually like different locations set up? Yes, uh, the lo- Well, this is a strange thing. Used before they rezoned, we used to have to drive 15 minutes over to Mulberry Grove Baptist Church, which is almost to where, you know, you can get to uh, Lake Ho- Holiday Lake. I mean, it's, that that's the road that you take. So it would take us a good 15 minutes to get there from where we were. But now since they rezoned it, um, I vote at the, or we voted at the um, Kurdsville Community Center, which is right up Route 15 at Kurdsville. You turn on School Road to the right there, and it's about five minutes, Okay, which is a whole lot better. Hell, a whole lot than, yeah, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Oof. Yeah, but I do hope everybody did vote or had a chance to vote. I had not. <clears throat> I wasn't. I've been so busy. Had not was not aware that the primary was yesterday until I was playing mahjong, mm. and somebody came in and said, "Yeah, have you voted?" So uh, where I was, I could just whip on around and and vote. So quickly get yeah, it. That yeah, that's good. nice. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, I th- I think it's it's well stating the obvious once again, Noah. But like incredibly important to vote. I just um, yeah, I I need a. Wish I, uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> well, I, I feel bad for not voting, but then again, uh, I don't know. I am registered to vote. I just, it did slip my mind that it was yesterday, but, um, yeah, well, I, like I said, I knew it was coming up, but mm-hmm. then you get your days yeah. mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, let's see. Tomorrow, do we have another guest coming in tomorrow? I think we may. Um, I could. I don't have the calendar in Is front it of me. Derek. Oh, it might be. It might be. Um, anyway, uh, yes. if we do have another guest coming for tomorrow, and <clears throat> I believe we do mm-hmm. on the Call Flow show, so we'll have that, and uh, we're going to end up just saying. You know, have a good night. Stay, stay cool today. Oh, yes. Yeah. Try, you know, definitely yeah. try to stay cool. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll have those three birthdays that we're going to celebrate today and tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So yep. we'll do those names Double again. the birthday celebration. Yeah. All right. Well, and also we thank um, Daniel Jordan from High Bridge Trail to come in and tell us some exciting news about that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to go to the uh, the Fireflies um, next after year. dark? Okay. Next year. Nice. Yeah. It was like I missed oh, it last weekend. Oh, man. So... Anyway. It's unfortunate. Yeah, because they, you know they do send us this information uh, for what's going on every every month, and it just wasn't in the cards this time. <laughs> All right, we're going to leave, yep. and uh, thanks for sitting in. Of course. Everybody have a fantastic June 19th.